Hello and welcome to Animation Flash Chapter 9 Lesson 2, uh, specifically working with movie clip symbols. Now, a lot of these things when we're going through um, is typing out some code, hoping you kind of understand what the code is meant. However, what I've done is I've typed out the code and then I'll kind of walk you through it. The very first thing they do is in the library they have these in the library they have a purple shirt, a red shirt, a rings, and a stars. And what you're doing here is you're actually making them into movie clips. And the way we go about doing that is on the property, on a symbol property side, you want to make sure to click the export for action script. And that's flash 9-18. Uh, and that's the steps one through nine, and you'll notice the class is now purple shirt MC. Now, this seems like a bunch of black box type information. However, these red shirt MC, the, and I'm going through each one of these real quick, um, the rings MC, and specifically the stars, the stars MC. In each one of these, um, by naming it this, I'm actually giving it a name I could use in variables, or excuse me, in the actual um, scripting later on. So then what I want to do is I want to click the action, and they want you to insert a new layer for your actions panel. What I'm going to do is I've already uh, programmed that action, and what we're going to specifically be looking at are these items right here. What I do when I actually create these items right here is I declare in code in their scripting a variable. And these variables are called purple shirt instance, red shirt instance, rings instance, and stars instance. And each one of these I connect to the type of uh, where it says purple shirt, red shirt, rings, and stars. So I, I connect these variables with an instance that I've created in the library here of purple shirt, red shirt, rings, and stars, which are those movie clips that we're going to use. Now there's a lot more code here, and I'm going to kind of walk through this. The next thing what I do is I create, when I run this, the purple button. So I'm going to go ahead and run it so you can see what it's doing. Um, when you get it, there is no event associated with any of these buttons. So you click these buttons and they do nothing. However, now I can click, let's say, the purple shirt and the purple shirt appears. I can click the red shirt and the red shirt appears. So what it's doing is it's making that graphic appear. I can choose stars, there's stars, choose rings, there's rings, I'm giving the values of that particular shirt. Now, the way I go about doing this, because right when you start, I click the purple or the red, nothing happens. I click stars and rings and nothing happens. What's going on when I create this right here, the very first thing I want to do is I want to import flash events, mouse event. What this is doing is this is going out in code and it's getting a library that creates a mouse event from the flash library. So this is, I, I'm checking out this particular object's eventually getting to mouse events. Then what I'm doing is I'm creating mouse events, I'm creating things that um, link to the mouse event. You'll see at figure 16, after I've done my four variables here, I then in, enter this right here, which is purple button, add event listener, meaning it's going to wait for the button, mouse event dot click display purple. So it's saying, okay, I want you to wait for the mouse event, and when the mouse event that's heard is click, I want you to run display purple. Display purple is a function that I've created right here, function display purple, based off of what it's going to take in as the mouse event. When display purple is clicked, I'm going to add the purple shirt instance, which I've given a value up here. So here's a purple sh shirt instance, which I've given the value up here, and here's the X and the Y coordinate of the actual purple shirt. So that actually places it at this X and Y coordinate, which means that if I'm testing my movie and I'm going along in my code, this line right here creates a, ver a variable of type purple shirt. It then imports the mouse event that says, okay, purple button because this button right here is defined as purple button. So if I go to this, uh, my buttons, and I look at my bubble to my purple button, and I go to the properties, it might not be a good example. Let me see if I can find the actual 
button itself. Well, this button right here has been called, or its name is that purple button. I couldn't pull it up for you. So let me go back. Let me shut the actions menu. So once again, let me pull up my movie again. So there it is. So what happens is, is this button has been called purple button. And the purple button dot add event listener, meaning I'm adding the ability for it to be clicked on, mouse click event, display purple. So as soon as that happens, I'm going to run my display purple function code that then actually creates the shirt here. And if you look, this does the exact same thing. Red button dot add event listener, mouse event click display red. So it's going up to where um, event listeners added a red button, which is this one right here. Then it calls the function display red when the mouse is clicked. Here's my function called display red. It then is instance a red shirt instance. So if I look up here, it's my red shirt, which I've associated a red shirt instance with the movie clip red shirt that I've called right here. So when I click this, this becomes a red shirt. Now, what's interesting as I go down, I have the same for rings and the same for stars. Walks through the same way. Is it the same both X and Y coordinate? That X coordinate and Y coordinate was predetermined, but it is this um, shirt right here. Then what happens is, in this particular case, I make the ri ring instance dot visible equal true. So where the rings are, I make them true so it shows. Where the stars are, I make it false so it doesn't show. Originally when you put this together until you got to page um, flash 922, 923, when I clicked on the stars instance and then I clicked on the rings instance, the rings and the stars would be superimposed over each other. So in order for them not to duplicate and not to be on the shirt at the same time, I make the ring, ring instance rings instance true and the stars instance false. On the stars, I make the ring instance false, meaning I hide the rings, and I make the stars instance true. Now, if I wanted to take all those off, for instance, right? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, well, I would co I could take those out or comment them out, but the normal method of commenting is, uh, well, <laughs> it's interesting to say the least. So, at any rate, I wonder if it's, can I put, there we go. So that'll comment out. I think this will comment out these instances of. All right, so let me go ahead and run this real quick. And let's see if that makes a difference. See if my commenting works. So there's my purple. Yeah, it doesn't like those. In, it doesn't like that comments. I, my comments screwed everything up. So don't do that with comments. Apparently it doesn't work the same way. Doobie doobie doo. Okay, now let's run that again. Make sure that I'm all back to normal. Yeah, and basically if I push stars now, the stars and the symbols, or the rings would be on top of each other is what's going on there. All right, so that basically walks you through some of the code here, and rather than have you watch me type it all in, I just went ahead and did it and then saw the results. But once again, this imports the mouse event from the flash library. This associates each one of these variables which eats with each one of these movie clips. This then associates the purple button, an event listener with it, and displays purple, and it defines what this function is right below it. This, and it goes with each one. So each one of them will have the name of the instance where and the x and the y coordinate where you want to place it. All right, that concludes lesson two of chapter nine. If you have any particular questions, let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you in uh, lesson three. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.